The world is a big place and with many countries in it, and we've done our best to make sure that as much land as possible has been claimed by one of those countries. Even Antarctica, the continent with no permanent inhabitants other than the occasional scientist, has had claims put on it as well. Well, most of it. For some reason, no one ever claimed this part. But when it comes to the areas outside of Antarctica, the permanently inhabited continents and outer lying islands, the area that makes up 134,740,000 square kilometers, 99.924254% of that is claimed by a country or dependency. But wait, that would mean that there's a tiny 0.075746% of the land not claimed by anybody. Well, that area is a roughly 2,060 square kilometer area in Africa. It's called Bir Tawil, and it's the only habitable land that nobody wants. Bir Tawil is in an area that's a part of the Sahara Desert, so it's always very arid and hot. Even during the winter, it only goes to 26 degrees Celsius or 79 degrees Fahrenheit. The summer, it's up to 45 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Looking at pictures of the place, it's hard to believe from first glance that it's habitable at all. Indeed, there are no officially permanent residents in the area, but it is technically habitable, and historically there have been nomadic tribes that moved through the area, and like other areas of the Sahara Desert, or other deserts, life in human society definitely finds a way to prosper anyway. Plenty of borders have been drawn through deserts and even fought over, so it's not that it's a desert that makes it unwanted. The reason it's not claimed is that it's along the Egyptian-Sudanese border. Egypt and Sudan have had a disputed border dating back to when both areas were a part of the British Empire. Egypt in the early 1800s was a part of the Ottoman Empire, but had achieved autonomy and began to run its own affairs. They conquered the area of modern-day Sudan, but when the British occupied Egypt to build the Suez Canal, the area known as Sudan broke off in what was called the Madhist Revolt. Britain had to basically conquer Sudan, and once they did, they decided it was better to have it separate from Egypt. So Britain and Egypt created a weird co-ownership over Sudan that they called the Anglo-Egyptian Condominium. But now they had to draw the border on where Egypt ends and Sudan begins. On January 19th of 1899, Britain decided to do what most European colonial empires did and just ignore the local politics and culture and draw straight lines. They established a straight line border along the 22nd parallel. But in a rare example of foresight, in 1902 Britain decided to adjust the border to better reflect cultural and tribal boundaries. So the border went from this to this. Britain eventually ended their occupation of Egypt and gave independence to Sudan in 1956, and both nations had their own ideas on what the border should be. Egypt supported the 1899 straight-lined border, while Sudan thought the status quo of the 1902 border should remain in place. With both of these borders superimposed on top of each other, you'll notice two disputed areas. The smaller one is Bir Tawil, and the much larger overlap to the east is called the Halaib Triangle. The Halaib Triangle has a coastline, more permanent settlements, and resources, such as oil. So naturally, Egypt wanted to enforce the 1899 border, and has since occupied the area. But if you're enforcing that border, that means Bir Tawil is outside of that jurisdiction. So Egypt refuses to claim the area because that would acknowledge the 1902 border. Sudan similarly claims the triangle and claims the 1902 border should still be in place, which means despite the 1899 border in theory giving them Bir Tawil, Sudan also refuses to administer the area because then that would mean they acknowledge the 1899 border. These technicalities are why both claim this area, but neither want to claim this area. So with that, Bir Tawil is the only unclaimed area outside of Antarctica. Sure, there are no man's lands or areas that are claimed by multiple countries, but no others that are just claimed by nobody. But there have been quite a few people who have attempted to take advantage of that and claim the territory as their own micronation. One example of that is Suyash Dikshit who went to the area, planted a flag, and proclaimed his own kingdom of Dikshit. Of course, no one ever recognizes such nations, and with the area being a really hot desert, most attempts don't last very long. Typically, if this land were to be claimed by someone to become its own country, but hope to get UN recognition, there'd have to be proof of someone having lived there for years and years. And since the area has become depopulated entirely due to the weird border dispute, it looks like this spot is going to remain unclaimed for the time being. I'm Emperor Tiger Star, and I'll see you guys next time. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and of course, you can support this channel with my Patreon, where you can see videos like this earlier than all the rest.